And what I want to work on this afternoon is the inside of the tank. We're going to take some of those scrapers and scrape some of the coralline algae or the, the calcareous algae that's grown inside the tank. I also want to go through and do a small little water change to suck out some of that big, long, flowing, hairy algae. So we got out our five gallon bucket, siphon hose and ladder, and we're gonna go through and siphon out some of that loose, uh, long wavy hair algae inside the tank. Try to make it look a little bit more attractive. So we've just gone ahead and done a 20 gallon water change. <clears throat> we siphoned out a tremendous amount of that loose algae. It'll cut down on what we have to look at inside the tank. Now you might think I'm cheating the algae scrubber out of some of its food source, but in fact the algae that's growing in the tank is only the result of the issue that the algae scrubber is addressing, and that is an abundance of nutrients, uh, nitrates, phosphates, things such as that. So all we've done is decrease some of the, uh, the, 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 the result, as I said, of the uh, algae or of the nutrient issue. So we've just added the water back after siphoning out all that loose hair algae. We're now going to get the scrapers and we're going to scrape that purple coralline algae off that's growing on the front acrylic panels. The coralline algae is technically an algae that uses calcium in its growing structure. It quite often will take the form of this purple variation, which a lot of times hobbyists uh, encourage by the addition of strontium, which is a trace element. Um, but unfortunately, it's one of those be careful what you wish for situations because once it starts growing, it really does tend to get out of control and require a lot of attention. And of course, here's where the real issue with an acrylic tank or cleaning an acrylic tank comes into play. So one of the decisions you have to make when deciding whether it be a glass tank or a, uh, an acrylic tank is what tools do you have available to clean the inside of the tank with. Uh, in the case of a glass tank, you could use uh, a razor blade or a putty knife to scrape uh, that calcareous algae off the inside of the tank, and you probably have a minimal effect on the glass itself. Use that same razor blade on an acrylic tank, and you'll start cutting gouges or scratching the inside of the tank. So you have to be careful and decide what is going to be the best tool for you to use in your particular application. As I mentioned, in a glass tank, you could probably use these metallic blades, like a razor blade, to go in there and scrape that off and, again, have minimal effect on the uh, glass. Uh, in the case of an acrylic tank, you'll have to use something that is uh, more specific to that, this being a plastic blade that allows you to go in there and scrape it. It's a little bit softer, and it doesn't have as sharp an edge on it. Uh, if you don't have one of these scrapers available to you, uh, you could use a, a credit card, um, which in today's economy is probably your best choice for using the credit card, but that's a whole nother story, isn't it? Um, I've got a name badge here, which is the same thing as a credit card, and I can use this to scrape some of that algae off the inside of the acrylic tank. It's really just a matter of scraping, and in some cases, chipping but with a little extra effort, one can effectively remove most of the calcareous algae growth. It's those awkward to reach or ignored areas that will require some extra effort. And that extra effort can be gained with the use of a long-handled scraper. This allows for a much greater reach especially down at the bottom of the tank or at the gravel line. But this too, with an acrylic aquarium, can be risky, especially down at the gravel line. A combination of a, a skewed angle looking downwards and an easily picked up granule of gravel could result in scratches in the acrylic aquarium. One really does need to pay attention at this point in the cleaning process. Well, I think we got a lot done this afternoon. 
it's not a hundred percent clean but it's certainly much more uh, viewable than it was when we started uh, we've also cut down on all that big long hair algae in there so at this point we still have a little bit of uh, the, the cleaning of the coralline algae to take care of um, we probably want to go through and vacuum the gravel a little bit uh, on the next part um, we'll be filming the modification of the lighting system up there at the very least the replacement of the bulbs I want to uh, drill a large hole in the back so I can put a, uh, a fan back there that'll exhaust some of that heat out of the canopy again our attempt here is to try to bring some of that operating cost down uh, I'm beginning to second thought the uh, the sea swirl not that I have anything against the sea swirl um, other than the anemones kind of I've talked about this before, they find themselves a point where they can open up right underneath the, uh, the that laminar flow coming out of the pump and if that's not a consistent flow, uh, the anemones may not find a consistent spot to sit. When in Los Angeles, make it a point to stop in Long Beach, California at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. At Age of Aquariums, their knowledgeable staff showcases designer aquariums featuring colorful corals and exotic fish, a spectacular four-sided 500-gallon living coral reef, along with a wide selection of coral frags and a large selection of saltwater fish, the cute, the graceful, and the not-so-cute. Age of Aquariums also carries a selection of popular freshwater fish for the beginning hobbyist. Along with a full line of aquarium supplies and supplements, Age of Aquariums quarantines and medicates all their new fish and proudly provides LA and Orange County's largest aquarium maintenance service. Age of Aquarium is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays. For more information, dial 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine has been the authoritative source for aquarium keepers since the first legendary issue rolled off the presses in 1952. With informative articles month after month about the fascinating world of freshwater aquariums, saltwater setups, paludariums, ponds, and more, illustrated in crisp detail by the world's top aquatic photographers, TFH covers it all. And now, with subscriptions starting at $13.95 and a mobile digital edition you can take with you wherever you go, TFH is your ultimate resource for all things aquatic. And here are some exciting previews of future episodes. This future episode shows how the recently set up 400 gallon bow front tank is doing. We made it through the cycles, including a diatom bloom, and have now progressed to adding schools of butterfly fish. A couple of weeks ago, I came across the shipment of golden eels just in from Brazil. I picked up one for the 400 gallon bow front aquarium. She may look like a snake, but it's pretty hard to hide in a big tank when you're banana yellow. And in this episode, we built our own version of an algae scrubber, only it's the entire filter by itself. We have a possible 90 gallon reef tank sale in the works. And our friend Rick is talking about setting up his 180 gallon reef tank again. Be sure to come on back again for these and other exciting opportunities with more of LA Fish Guides. I wanted to kind of bring you up to date and at the same time the rules of the game have kind of changed here, so technically it's kind of the end of this test period. We put the Santa Monica Algae Scrubber on this tank uh, on um, October 9th. It's now December 11th, so that's been just a hair over two months. No pun intended. The pun being the hair algae in the tank. While the scrubber has not completely eliminated all the algae, 
it significantly decreased the pace that it grows back in. And so I see that as a positive issue or positive result with the LG scrubber. As much as I would like it to have resolved that problem in 30 days, that might have been a little um, uh, expectatious on my part for a system that's been allowed to decline over the last three or four years and expect it again to resolve it in the matter of 30 days. 60 days, um, hopefully within 90 days. What I'm going to do today, again, the, the, the rules of the test have changed. I acquired uh, or scored uh, on a new 400-gallon Bowfront aquarium system sale. And as part of that sale, I have to break down a 14-year-old reef tank um, that unfortunately is infested with flatworms. So those corals are really not of any value for resale. Um, but I'm certainly not going to throw them away, so they're going to end up going into this tank. While the algae scrubber and the algae issues still are remaining, um, the worms or the corals and the flatworms coming into the tank may change the parameters a little bit. So as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of the end of the first test period. The, 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 the results are it has not eliminated all of the algae, but I've seen enough of a decrease that I'm still uh, convinced that this is a viable piece of equipment. So what I want to do today is go through and siphon out some more of that algae. I also want to um, remove the screen out of the algae scrubber and show you just how much and what type of algae it's actually growing to give you an idea as to how effective it is actually uh, or what kind of job it's actually doing in the tank. Um, I have found that if I do not uh, scrape the screen on the algae scrubber at least weekly at this phase of the um, uh, nutrient removal game, I'm going to end up uh, with so much algae that it plugs the exit of the scrubber and water can't exit. In fact, twice now, uh, I think ironically, both on Saturday nights, uh, well past midnight, I've realized that someone was wrong in the system, opened the cabinet doors to find that water was slowly seeping out of the scrubber because it couldn't flow out of the scrubber. And that was because I hadn't gotten in there and cleaned it often enough. So when these things are in full force, uh, you have to clean them weekly and possibly even more. And in this case, it appears as though this unit is really having to work hard to consume all those nutrients in there. And as a result, it grows an abundance of algae. And if that's not removed from that screen, again, it's going to cause a problem with the water leaving the unit. In this case, the drain out of the unit. Um, the other thing is, as I mentioned, I'm changing the rules of the, uh, the test, so it's no longer really a test. But uh, let's get started here and get back to work. So you can see the scrubber inside here. You can see the amount of algae growing inside of it, and that's that bright green stuff that gets kind of stringy. And so it requires me to clean it at least weekly. At this point in time, the scrubber has become fully capable. Its ability, in combination with the high level of nutrients in this tank, allow the scrubber to produce significant amounts of algae on its screen. So much so, that if not cleaned on a regular basis, it can back up. You can see just how much green algae is growing on that screen. So it's definitely doing what it's intended to do. One of the other things that I have found that you also need to address is the algae that grows in the tray or inside the scrubber itself. In particular, around that drain bulkhead because if it can't exit the unit, it's going to eventually overflow a little bit and that could be problematic. So I also have to make it a point to clean the algae on the inside of that. Another nice thing that the name badge or credit card works well for is its width fits perfectly inside the scrubber chamber. Keep in mind that in addition to cleaning the screen, the inside of the scrubber needs to be clean. If light cannot reach the screens due to algae growing on the clear panels, then algae won't grow on the hanging screens. So you can see here the screen's got an abundance of algae growing on it and we're gonna cut the little clips that hold that screen on the rod, then we'll scrape the algae off the screens. 
By removing the screens, we can clean the slot that the screens sit in. By removing blockage from that slot, we can make sure that the water spilling through the slot covers 100% of the screen as it flows down across the algae. I had mentioned previously that there are a number of opinions on how and how much to clean the screens. As seen, I use a card to scrape off the algae easily. I have also seen the use of an old hacksaw blade that far more effectively removes the algae growth. In both cases, the algae grows back. One just takes a little bit longer before it needs to be harvested again. That's all the algae that I've scraped off that. A good strong blast of water should rinse away all the loose particles. And with the screens clean, we'll go ahead and replace that into the scrubber. And then once again, the scrubber is back and running. Ready to grow more algae. And consume some more nutrients that the algaes in the tank are feeding upon. But I don't have time to wait for this to um, do that, so I'm gonna end up having to go in and uh, gonna do a water change today and in the process suck out uh, as much of the uh, algae that's in the tank um, that has grown back in anticipation of the corals here in the next few days. So that's the current scoop on the uh, algae scrubber on this 125 gallon I have buried here at the back of the living room. I do still see the potential in the algae scrubber so I have no intent on removing it. I'll just keep running it and it will eventually suck up all the nutrients in the system which essentially will starve the algae in the tank. But in the meantime I have to use this tank as a holding system because this job that I picked up later this week is going to require me to remove and break down a 300 gallon coral reef tank and I do need some place to hold those corals. I've also kind of decided probably not at the moment to go with that sea swirl namely because I'm afraid of um, uh, affecting the anemones but who knows maybe the addition of corals will have something to do with that. And I did start changing some of the light bulbs here recently. I did replace one of the power compact bulbs and I started replacing a couple of the regular fluorescents and then I thought, well, this is kind of going backwards. Backwards in the sense that I could, do have some LED lights that I could be putting on this tank and testing for um, uh, myfishtank.com future customers. So I think I'll just go ahead and hold off on replacing the fluorescent bulbs. So make it a point to come on back after the break and you can see uh, what the tank will look like once we start putting all those corals in there. Almost like an instant reef tank. <laughs>